won the lancet and the quicksword though the cold wind is like a knife. The earth is used as a chopping board, and all living beings are regarded as fish and meat. Thousands of miles of flying snow, using the sky as a furnace, melting everything into silver. The snow is coming, and the wind is still uncertain. A carriage comes from the north. The rolling wheels crush the ice and snow on the ground, but they cannot crush the loneliness between heaven and earth. Chi Jiguan yawned, and stretched his long legs as far as possible on the soft mink fur. Although the carriage was very warm and comfortable, the journey was too long and his thoughts tended to be too lonely. In a narrow sense, it only refers to a kind of life proposed by the British philosopher Popper. Life is full of contradictions, and no one can do anything about it. Chi Jiguang sighed, and took out a wine bottle from the corner. When he drank the wine, he all loudly. The constant sighs made his pale face glow with a sickly blush. It was as if things in hell were burning his body and soul. When the wine bottle was empty, he picked up a small knife and began to carve a figure. The blade was thin and sharp, and his fingers were long and powerful. It was a portrait of a woman whose contours and lines seemed so soft and graceful under his skillful hand that it seemed alive. He not only gave her moving lines, but also gave her life and soul, because his life and soul have slipped away from the blade. He is no longer young. The corners of his eyes are full of wrinkles, each wrinkle is full of worries and misfortunes in his life, only his eyes are young. These are a pair of strange eyes, which seem to be emerald green, like willow branches blown by the spring breeze, gentle and flexible, and like sea water under the summer sun, full of pleasant vitality. Perhaps it is because of these eyes that he can live to this day. Now that the portrait was finally completed, he stared at the portrait obsessively for an unknown amount of time, then he suddenly pushed open the car door and jumped off. The big man driving the carriage immediately yelled and stopped the carriage. This man was sweating profusely with a beard and his eyes were as sharp as an eagle's. But when his eyes moved to Chi Jiguang, they immediately became soft and full of loyal sympathy, just like a vicious dog looking at his master. Chi Jiguang actually dug a hole in the snow, buried the newly carved portrait deeply, and then he stood in front of the snowdrift in a daze. His fingers were numb from the cold, his face was red from the cold, and his body was covered with snowflakes. But he didn't feel cold at all. The person buried in this snowdrift was like a person closest to him. When he buried her, his own life became meaningless. If it was someone else, they would definitely be surprised to see him behave like this but the Khan who drove the car seemed to be used to it, so he just said softly, it's almost dark, and the road ahead is still far away. Master, get in the car quickly. Chi Jiguan turned around slowly, and found that beside the rut, there was actually a line of Footprints, coming here alone from the far north, and walking forward alone. The footprints are very deep. It is obvious that this person has walked countless times and is exhausted, but he still refuses to stop and rest. Chi Jiguan sighed and murmured, In this kind of weather, 
I don't think there are people who have to run around and suffer in the ice and snow. I think he must be a very lonely and poor person. The muscular man didn't say anything, but sighed secretly in his heart, aren't you also a very lonely and poor person? Why do you always only know how to sympathize with others? But forget yourself. There are many pieces of solid pine wood under the car seat, and Chi Jiguang began to carve again. His technique is concise and skillful, because what he carves is always the same person. This person has not only occupied his heart, but also his body. The snow finally stopped, but the cold air between the sky and the earth became heavier, and the loneliness became stronger. Fortunately, there was a sound of human footsteps in the wind here. Although the sound was much softer than the sound of horseshoes, it was the sound Chi Jiguang was looking forward to, so no matter how slight the sound was, he would never miss it. So he raised the ermine curtain and opened the window. Immediately he saw the lonely figure walking ahead. This person walked very slowly, but he never stopped. Although he heard the hissing of the bell and horse, he never turned his head. He neither brought an umbrella nor a hat, and the melted snow and ice flowed down his face and down his neck, and he was only wearing a very thin piece of clothing. But his back is still straight, his body is like iron, ice, snow, severe cold, tiredness, fatigue, hunger, all can't make him yield. Nothing can make him succumb. Chi Jiguan only saw his face when the carriage came to the front. His eyebrows are thick, his eyes are large, his thin lips are tightly drawn into a line and his straight nose makes his face look thinner. This face makes people easily think of Hua Gangsha, stubborn, determined, indifferent, indifferent to everything, even to himself. But this is also the most handsome face Qi Jiguan has ever seen in his life. Although he is still too young and immature, he already has enough attractive charm. There seemed to be a smile in Chi Jiguan's eyes, he pushed open the car door and said, get in the car, I'll give you a ride. His words have always been very simple and powerful. In this endless world of ice and snow, his proposal is really impossible for anyone to refuse. Who knew that this strong man didn't even look at him, and he didn't stop in his footsteps, as if he didn't hear anyone talking at all. Chi Jiguan said, Are you deaf? The strong man's hand suddenly grasped the hilt at his waist. His hand was already whiter than the flesh of a fish, but his movements were still very flexible. Chi Jiguan laughed and said, so you are not deaf, so come up and have a drink at the bar. A sip of wine will not harm anyone. The strong man suddenly said, I can't afford it. He would say such a sentence unexpectedly. Chi Jiguang smiled even in the wrinkles at the corners of his eyes, but he didn't laugh, but said softly, I invite you to drink you don't need to spend money to buy it. The brawny man said, I will never take anything I didn't buy myself, and I will never drink wine I didn't buy myself, have I made my words clear enough? Chi Jiguan said, it's clear enough. The strong man said, okay, let's go. Chi Jiguan was silent for a long time, suddenly smiled and said, okay, I'll go, 
But when you can afford wine, will you buy me a drink? The strong man glared at him and said, Okay, I invite you. Chi Jiguan laughed loudly, the carriage had already driven away, and gradually the figure of the strong man disappeared. Chi Jiguan smiled and said, Have you ever seen such a strange? Strong man? I thought he must have been through many vicissitudes. Who would have? thought that what he said was so naive and honest. The bearded man driving the car said calmly, he's just a stubborn kid. Chi Jiguang said, can you see the sword in his belt? The bearded man also had a smile in his eyes, and said, can that be considered a sword? Strictly speaking, that is really not a sword. It is just a piece of iron more than three feet long, it has neither blade nor jaw, not even a hilt. It's the sword changing handle. The bearded man smiled and continued, in my opinion, it's just a child's toy. This time instead of smiling, Chi Jiguan sighed and murmured, in my opinion, this toy is very dangerous. It's better not to play with it. The inns in the small town were not very big. At this time, they were full of tourists who were blocked by the wind and snow, making them extremely crowded and lively. There are more than a dozen empty dark carts covered with straw mats piled up in the yard. And the straw mats are also covered with snow. Under the eaves on the east side, there is a caramel-colored dart flag slanted with gold rims, blown waxy by the wind. The sound is so loud that people can hardly tell whether it is a tiger or a lion embroidered with gold thread. In the restaurant in front of the inn, Big men in sheepskin jackets came in and out from time to time, and some of them deliberately opened their skirts after drinking a few glasses of wine to show that they were not afraid of the cold. When Chi Jiguan arrived here, there was not even a single vacant bed in the inn, but he was not in a hurry, because he knew that there were not many things in the world that could not be bought with money so he looked for them in the hotel first. Opened a table in the corner, ordered a jug of wine, and drank slowly. He didn't drink fast, but he could drink for days and nights without stopping. He kept drinking and sighing, and it was getting dark gradually. The big bearded man walked in, stood behind him, and said, The upper room in the south is vacant and has been cleaned, young master can rest at any time. Chi Jiguang seemed to have already known that he would handle this matter well, so he just nodded, and after a long while, the big bearded man suddenly said, there are also people from the Golden Lion Bodyguard Bureau staying in this inn, who seem to have just come from abroad. Bring the darts back. Chi Jiguan said, Oh. Who is the escort? The big bearded man said, It's the Zhuga god monkey of the quick wind sword dot. Chi Jiguan frowned, and smiled again. It's not easy for this madman to survive until now. Although he was talking to the people behind him, his eyes kept staring at the door with the cotton curtain in front, as if he was waiting for someone. The big bearded man said, the child's footsteps are not fast, I'm afraid he won't be able to get here until the watch starts. Chi Jiguang smiled and said, I don't think he can walk fast, but he just doesn't want to waste his energy. 
Have you ever seen a wolf walking on the snow? If there is no prey in front and no pursuers behind, it must it refuses to walk fast, because it thinks it would be a pity to use all its strength to walk. The bearded man also laughed, and said, but that child is not a wolf. Chi Jiguang said nothing more, because at this moment he sighed again. Then, he saw three people walking into the restaurant through a door at the back, all three. Of them were talking loudly about those knife-licking blood activities, as if they were afraid that others would not know that they were Gold Lion Dart's big dart head. Qi Jiguang recognized the fat man with purple red face as Jifengjian, but he didn't want to be recognized by the other party, so he lowered his head to carve his portrait. Fortunately, after Zhuge God Monkey arrived in this small town, he didn't look at anyone at all. They quickly asked for food and wine, and began to eat and drink. But the food and drink could not stop their mouths. After drinking a few glasses of wine, Zhuge God Monkey was even more arrogant and laughed loudly. Second brother, do you still remember the day when we met the Taihang Four Tigers at the foot of Taihang Mountain? Something. Another person said with a smile, Why don't I remember? That day the Taihang Four Tigers dared to move the red goods that the eldest brother had protected, and the four of them. Showed off their power and said something, as long as you Zhuge God Monkey calls. Around on the ground, our brothers will immediately come to you. Let you go over the mountain. Otherwise we will not only keep your red goods, but also your head. The third person also laughed loudly and said, Who would have thought that before their knives were cut off, the elder brother's sword had already pierced their throats. The second person said, It's not that I, Zhao Lao Er, uh, is bragging. In terms of the strength of the palm, it is natural to count as our chief escort's golden lion palm. But in terms of the speed of the sword, I am afraid that there is no one in the world today. It's time for our big brother. Zhuge God Monkey raised his glass and laughed, but his laughter suddenly stopped, and he saw that the thick cotton curtain was suddenly blown up by the wind. The two figures were blown up by the wind like snowflakes. Both of them were wearing bright red cloaks and wide brimmed snow hats on their heads. They were almost the same shape and height. Although everyone couldn't see their faces, seeing their outstanding lightness skills and eye catching attire, they couldn't help but feel their eyes straighten. Only Qi Jiguang's eyes were staring at the door all the time, because when the curtain was blown up just now, he had already seen the lonely strong man. The strong man stood outside the door, and seemed to have stood there for a long time, just like a lonely wild wolf. Although he longed for the warmth inside the door, he was afraid of the dazzling firelight, so he was reluctant to leave. But dare not break into this person's world. Chi Jiguan sighed softly, and then turned his gaze to the two of them. I saw that these two people had slowly taken off their snow hats, revealing two withered, thin and ugly faces which looked like two yellow curly heads. Their ears are small, but their noses are huge, occupying almost one third of a face, squeezing the eyes to the ears. But their eyes were vicious and piercing, like the eyes of a rattlesnake. Then, 
they began to take off their cloaks again, revealing the dark tight clothes underneath. It turned out that their bodies were also like poisonous snakes, slender, tough, wriggling. Anytime and anywhere, and they were still sticky and wet, making people look at them. It was both frightening and disgusting. These two people look almost exactly the same, except that the face of the person on the left is pale while the face of the person on the right is as black as the bottom of a pot. They all moved very slowly, slowly took off their cloaks, slowly folded them up, walked slowly past the counter, and then, the two of them walked slowly in front of Zhuga God Monkey together. The restaurant was so quiet that even Qi Jiguang's sound of chopping wood could be heard. Although Sugar God Monkey wanted to pretend that he didn't see these two people, he really couldn't. Those two people just stared at him for a moment, their eyes were like two wet brushes dipped in oil, brushing back and forth on Sugar God Monkey. Sugar God Monkey could only stand up, forced a smile and said two people with high surnames. Forgive me for my clumsy eyes. The pale-faced human snake suddenly said, You are the sugar god monkey of Jifengjian. His voice was sharp, hasty, and trembling, just like the sound of a rattlesnake. Sugar god. Monkey shuddered when he heard it. No. Don't dare. The dark-faced human snake sneered and said, Only by you. Are you worthy of the title of Jifengjian? With a shake of his hand, a black and slender soft sword suddenly appeared in his palm, and he shook the soft belt-like sword again, until it was straightened. He pointed the sword at Sugar God Monkey, and said word by word, Leave the bag you brought back from the mouth, and I will spare your life. The second Jiao stood up suddenly, and said with a smile, I'm afraid you two made a mistake, our escort is for foreign affairs, and now the escort cart is empty, there is nothing, both of you. Before he could finish his words, the black shark-like sword in the man's palm had wrapped around his neck, and when the hilt was lightly touched, Zhao Lao'er's head suddenly jumped up out of thin air. Then, a stream of blood rushed out from his neck, causing the head to turn twice in mid-air. And then the blood rained down, sprinkled on Zhuge God Monkey's body little by little. Everyone's eyes are straightened, but their legs are playing the peeper non-stop. But Shuga God Monkey has survived until now. After all, he has two hands. He suddenly took out a yellow cloth bag from his arms, threw it on the table, and said, The tricks of the two are really good. It's true that I brought back a package from my mouth, but the two of you just want to take it away like this, I'm afraid it won't work. The black shark smiled sullenly and said, What do you want? Chuga Shenhu said, The two of you must save your real kung fu, so that you can have an explanation when you go back next time. While he was talking, he had already stepped back seven steps, and suddenly he drew his sword in the shape of left and right. Others only thought that he was going to fight the opponent desperately. Unexpectedly, with a backhand, he picked up a dish on the table next to him. The dish contained shrimp balls, and the shrimp balls flew up immediately. He only heard the hiss of the sword wind, and the sword light turned around like a horse, 
and More than a dozen shrimp balls were cut in half by him and fell to the ground one after another. Shuga Shinho's face was bright, and he said, As long as the two of you can still play a hand, I will present this package immediately, otherwise, please go away. His swordsmanship is really not weak, and he speaks well. It was very beautiful, but Chi Jiguang was secretly amused. If he did this, others would have to chop off the shrimp balls instead of his head. Whether he wins or loses, at least he has saved his life first. Black Shark giggled and said, This can only be regarded as a cook's skill, can it also be regarded as martial arts? Speaking of this, he took a long breath, and the shrimp balls that had just landed on the ground flew up flutteringly again, and then, with a flash of black light, all the shrimp balls all over the sky disappeared suddenly. He has already pierced all of them on the sword. Even those who don't know martial arts know that although it is not easy to chop shrimp balls with a sword, if you want to pierce shrimp balls with a sword, you have to have the strength of your hand and your eyesight, not to mention the difficulty. How many times? Juga God Monkey's face was ashen, because he saw this sword technique, he suddenly thought of two people, he took a few steps back quietly, and then said in a loud voice, could it be that the two of you are, the twin blood snakes is it? Hearing the words green blood and twin snakes, the other bodyguard, whose face was pale with fright, suddenly slipped under the table. Even the muscular man behind Chi Jiguang couldn't help frowning, because he also knew that the underworld friends in the Yellow River area in recent years, in terms of dark hearts and hot hands, there are very few people who can stand on top of the big blood and two snakes. I heard that the red cloaks they wore were dyed with blood. But he still didn't hear much, because nine out of ten people who really knew what the jade blood snakes had done had their heads moved. He only heard the black shark chuckle and said, You still recognized us, at least your eyes. Are not blind. Shugashin who gritted his teeth, and said, Since the two of you have taken a fancy to this bag, if you have anything to say, please, just take it. White shark suddenly said, If you are willing to crawl around on the ground, our brothers. We'll let you go immediately, otherwise we will not only leave your baggage, but also your head. This sentence was exactly what Shuga God Monkey and the others said just now when they were bragging about themselves, but now when it comes out of the white shark's mouth, every word becomes like a knife. Tilda, Juga God Monkey's face turned blue and turned white, he was stunned for a while, then suddenly crawled on the ground, and actually crawled around the table. Chi Jiguan couldn't help sighing until now, and murmured, it turns out that this man's temper has changed, no wonder he can live till now. His voice was very low but the eyes of the black and white snakes had already stared at him, but he didn't seem to see it, and was still carving his portrait. Baisho gave a dark smile, and said, So there are some tall people here, my brother almost misjudged him. Heisho grinned and said, This burden is willingly given to us, as long as someone's. Swordsmanship is faster than my brother, my brother is also willing to offer this burden with 
both hands. White shark's hand trembled, and there was also a soft sword like a poisonous snake in his palm, but the light of the sword was as dazzling as a white rainbow. This burden is given to him, and even the head is given to him. Their eyes were fixed on Qi Jiguang's face like poisonous snakes, but Qi Jiguang was concentrating on carving his wood, as if he couldn't understand what they were talking about. But someone outside the door suddenly shouted, How much is your head worth? Hearing this sentence, Qi Jiguang seemed surprised, but also very happy. He raised his head, and the strong man finally walked into the room. The clothes on his body were not completely dry, and some of them had even turned into shards of ice, but his body was still straight as straight as a javelin. His face still looked so lonely, so stubborn. There is always an unyielding wildness in his eyes, as if he is ready to fight and rebel at any. Time, making people afraid to get close to him. But the most noticeable thing was the sword stuck in his belt. Seeing the sword, the anger in Baishu's eyes turned into a sneer. He chuckled and said, Did you say that just now? The strong man said, Yes. White Shark said, You want to buy my head? The strong man said, I just want to know how much it is worth, because I want to sell it to you. Baisho was startled, and said, sell it to me. The brawny man said, that's right, because I don't want the burden, nor the head. White Shark said, so, you want to come to me for a sword fight? The strong man said, yes. White Shark looked him up and down for a few times, then looked at the sword at his waist and suddenly burst into laughter, he had never seen such a funny thing in his life. The strong man just stood there quietly, completely ignorant of what the man was laughing at. What he consciously said was not worthy of being so funny. The muscular man sighed secretly, as if he felt that the kid was really poor and crazy and Sugar God Monkey also felt that there was something wrong with his head. White Shark laughed and said, My head is hard to buy. The strong man said, There are too many thousands of gold, I only need fifty tails. White Shark stopped laughing suddenly, because he had realized that this strong man was neither crazy nor idiot, and he was not joking what he said seemed to be very serious. But when he looked at the sword again, he couldn't help laughing again, and said, Okay, as long as you can do this again, I will give you fifty tails. Amidst the laughter, the light of his sword flashed, as if it was about to hit the candle on the counter, but the candle remained motionless as the sword light passed by. Everyone thought it was a bit strange, but the white shark had already blown out a breath at this time, and the candle was suddenly divided into seven sections, and the sword light flashed. Again, all seven sections of candles were put on the sword, and the last section of the candle flashed. He moved but the candle flame was still not extinguished it turned out that he had cut the candle into seven pieces with a sword just now. White Shark proudly said, Do you think my sword is fast? There was no expression on the strong man's face, and he said, Soon. White Shark grinned and said, How are you? The strong man said, my sword is not for sharpening candles. White Shark said, 
Then what are you using this scrap metal for? The strong man held the hilt of his sword and said word by word, My sword is for killing people. The white shark giggled and said, Kill someone? Who can you kill? The strong man said, You. The word you was out of his mouth, and his sword had already pierced it. The sword was still stuck in the belt of the strong man, and everyone saw the sword. Suddenly, the sword was inserted into the white shark's throat, and everyone saw the three. Footlong blade passed through the white shark's throat. But no one saw clearly how his sword pierced the white shark's throat. No blood is shed, because the blood has not yet shed. The strong man stared at the white shark and said, Is it your sword speed? Or my sword speed? The white shark's throat groaned, every muscle on his face was beating, his nostrils were gradually expanding. His mouth was wide open, and his tongue was sticking out. Blood dripped from the tip of his tongue. Heisha's sword was already raised, but he didn't dare to stab it out. The sweat on his face kept dripping down, and the sword in his hand was trembling constantly. The brawny man suddenly pulled out his sword and the blood shot out from the white shark's throat like an arrow, and he let out a suffocated breath, roaring, you. After this roar, his people fell face to face. But the strong man turned to Heisha and said, he has surrendered, what about the fifty tails of silver? He is still so serious, as serious as a silly child. But this time, no one laughed at him again. Heisha's lips were trembling, and he said, You, you, did you really kill him for fifty tails of silver? The strong man smiled lightly and said, Not bad. Heisha's face was all contorted. He didn't know whether to cry or laugh. Suddenly he shook the sword in his hand, pulled his hair vigorously, tore all the clothes on his body, and dropped the silver in his arms when he got down. He threw the silver in front of the brawny man forcefully, crying, Here you are, I'll give you all. He ran out like a madman. The strong man neither chased nor got angry but stooped to pick up two ingots of silver, brought them to the shopkeeper behind the counter, and said, Do you think this is enough for fifty tails? The shopkeeper was already half short, shrunk under the counter, his teeth were chattering, he couldn't speak, he just nodded desperately. Only then did Chi Jiguang turn around and smile at the muscular man, and said, I'm not wrong, am I? The man sighed and said with a wry smile, That's not bad at all, that toy is too dangerous. He saw the strong man walking towards them, but he didn't see Zhuge God Monkey's movements. Sugar God Monkey never got up from under the table. At this moment, he suddenly jumped up and stabbed the strong man's back with a sword. His sword is not slow at all, and the strong man never thought that he would make a plot against him. He killed the white shark. Sugar God Monkey should be grateful to him. Why kill him? Seeing that the sword was about to pierce his heart, at this moment, Juga God Monkey roared wildly, jumped up to a height of six feet, and the sword in his hand flew out, and stuck on the roof beam. The silk tassel on the hilt was still trembling, 
Chuga God Monkey covered his throat with both hands, staring at Qi Jiguang, his eyeballs almost protruding. Qi Jiguang was not carving wood at the moment, because the small wood carving knife in his hand was gone. Blood flowed out from Zhuge God Monkey's back. He stared at Qi Jiguang, and there was a rattling sound in his throat, only then did someone. Realized that Qi Jiguang's wood carving knife had reached his throat. But no one saw how the knife got to his throat. Seeing that Zhuge God Monkey was sweating profusely, his face was deformed by the pain. He gritted his teeth suddenly, pulled out the knife, glared at Qi Jiguang and roared, So it's you, I should have recognized you a long time ago. Already? Qi Jiguang sighed, It's a pity that you didn't recognize me until now, otherwise you might not have done such a shameful thing. Zhuge God Monkey didn't hear his words, and he will never hear them again. The burly man also looked back, with a look of surprise on his face, as if he couldn't think of why this man wanted to kill him anymore. But he just glanced at it, and walked up to Qi Jiguang, his wild eyes seemed to show a warm smile. He just said a word, he said, I invite you to drink. 